Hello, it's Stuart the Unrepented Atheist. Thank you for tuning in. And today in this video, I'm going to be discussing the uh, debate or rather discussion that Bart Ehrman and Justin Bass had on uh, the following question. Did Jesus of Nazareth rise from the dead? Which I suppose equates to did the resurrection really happen? So it's on the premier unbelievable um, YouTube channel. It was hosted by a Christian gentleman. I've seen him on other channels. I think Modern Day Debates. Can't quite remember. Um, he was in a disc he was in a discussion with Alex O'Connor on one occasion. Uh, he is a Christian, of course, and the uh, this series is called the Big Conversation, and it's sponsored by the Templeton Foundation. Not that that really matters, because obviously I had no complaints in terms of. Uh, how the discussion was run. We, we know who Bart Ehrman is. We know that he's he's an atheist. They describe him as an agnostic, but he's an atheist. And Justin Bass is a New Testament scholar who obviously is a Christian. And they spoke to each other for about, what, one hour, ten minutes? And I've just made some notes on some of my impressions. I've also just done a survey on, uh, I didn't realize there would be so many questions, otherwise I probably wouldn't have bothered doing it. But anyway, I'd, uh, <clears throat> I did the survey asking various questions about what was my original opinion? Did I change my mind? Would I be more likely to believe that the resurrection really did happen, etc.? And of course, my answer to that would be no, and that it didn't change my mind at all, one way or the other, because I was already firmly convinced that um, a case for the resurrection uh, on the evidence which is available, I don't believe, can be made. So, thank goodness for Bart Ehrman. Thank goodness that we've got him, a secular scholar who is deeply interested in the New Testament and the Bible, very well uh, researched, very well educated, etc. And if it wasn't for Bart Ehrman, who else would there be countering all this uh, Christian nonsense? Uh, sorry, I'm poisoning the well, I suppose, but... That's how I feel about things. We've only really got Bart Ehrman. Okay, Richard Carrier, he's uh, he's a mythicist, isn't he? And I actually think what he's got to say is very useful as well, but there's not really much out there because obviously the very nature of the thing is that if you take the Quran, how many secular scholars are there who are not Muslims who study the Quran? Probably none or probably just one or two. And in a way, I'm surprised that there are any secular uh, scholars of the New Testament. Because it's a theological text, Christians only tend to be interested in it. And why would a non-Christian be interested in uh, devoting his life to uh, New Testament studies? Well, I suppose we could talk about that. But what I really want to talk about is what went on in the discussion. What I saw overall was Bart Ehrman employing historical methods to evaluate all the points that Justin Bass was making. And I saw Justin Bass uh, making a lot of appeals to popularity, incredulity, um, making a lot of theological points. And I didn't really see much substance in terms of providing any evidence that Jesus of Nazareth really did rise from the dead. Just to give you an example, of some of the points that were made. For example, he says about Islam, nobody nobody has visions in Islam. This is one of the big differences. Uh, I mean, nobody, nobody saw anybody rising from the dead or anything like that. Nobody saw, nobody claimed to see Allah. And he was saying that what you've got in the New Testament, in the Gospels, is something which was very unexpected nobody expected nobody expected jesus to rise from the dead and in particular he cites peter um and some of the other apostles who claim that they saw jesus and that there were a certain number of witnesses and that it would be difficult given that it was an unexpected nobody expected that jesus would rise from the dead it, it would be difficult to accept that unless Jesus really did rise from the dead, that they would go around telling these stories and claiming that they'd seen him. 
Well, I think that Bart Ehrman actually conceded more than I would concede. And namely what he conceded was that uh, that Peter and Paul did see something and that other witnesses also saw something. So he conceded that some of the claims in the Gospels, he agreed with just because Justin Bay said, are you denying that Paul saw anything? Are you denying that Peter saw anything, etc.? And the other witnesses. And Bart Ehrman said, no, he agrees. This really surprised me, to be honest with you. He agrees that they did see something and it's just a question of what they saw. So uh, in the case of Peter, for example, he said it's quite conceivable. And actually, I agree with this as a hypothesis for how the whole thing got going, because I mean, it's not to me, it's not inconceivable as it is, as also to Bart Ehrman that Peter denied Jesus three times, right? Uh, Paul was persecuting Christians. Now, in, in human history and in human experience, when somebody has died that you feel guilty about, you've wronged them or you've said bad things to them or, you know, whatever, it's not unusual for people to have visions of people that have died when they've wronged them like some kind of, um, I don't know, uh, guilty conscience is conjuring up this person, either as a hallucination or whatever. And there are instances of this. It's reported, uh, you know, psychologists and psychiatrists and just, you know, you can, uh, I mean, I personally know of uh, somebody who saw somebody, you know, that they'd wronged and you know, they felt guilty about them dying. And they came to me and said, oh, you know, who I saw appeared in, in my bedroom last night. Uh, you know, so I've, I've heard these stories myself. Um, so I know that it happens and it's not inconceivable that Peter having denied Jesus three times uh, may have had some kind of uh, hallucination, may have thought that he saw Jesus and Paul was persecuting Christians. Maybe he started to feel guilty about that and he had some kind of experience on the road to Damascus that wasn't literally him seeing Jesus. It might have been, who knows, some kind of hallucination. It might just have been a dream. Who knows what it was? But also Bart Ehrman made the point that with Paul, for example, he, he had his um, Damascus Road experience well after the death of Jesus and well after these stories had started to take a hold. So he was no doubt aware of them, that there were claims that Jesus had not had, had risen from the dead. He was aware of that and that people had seen him. And therefore, it makes some kind of sense that, um, you know, with the guilty conscience he had and everything, that he might have imagined that he saw Jesus himself. I mean, to me, to me, putting those two, no matter how unlikely you think that is, actually, I don't think it's that unlikely, but if you put the unlikelihood of that scenario against a real resurrection, Jesus really dying and coming back from the dead, a human being dying and coming back from the dead, which one is more likely? I mean, anybody but a real devout believer would have to say, I think that a non-supernatural explanation is more likely. But I did think that Bart Ehrman went one step too far in conceding that Peter and other apostles had actually seen something and Paul had seen something. It's just a question of what they did see. I don't know, maybe he said that so there could be a discussion because the problem is if you close down uh, the New Testament as evidence and say, well, it's not corroborated so we can't accept anything in it, as people like Matt Dillahunty does, um, it kind of closes down the discussion and then there's nothing to discuss. So I can kind of see why he did do that. But just expanding out, so what um, this thing about, because uh, Bass then, Justin Bass then went on to say, well, we've also had not just those eyewitnesses as reported in the Gospels and the New Testament, 
We've also had uh, well over a thousand years of other sightings of Jesus. So it's not just those, but it's later sightings as well. And then um, uh, Bar Terman said, well, you know, if, if you are putting a lot of weight on the original eyewitnesses, that would mean that if we, ca if we encountered other claims which also had um, claimed eyewitnesses who were there near the events, you would have to accept those claims as well. And he mentioned Mormonism. And then Justin Bass said, well, you know, Mormonism, no, that was all a fraud, etc., etc." And uh, Bartoma said, well, hold on a minute. We've got this happening in the 19th century, less than 200 years ago. And we've got, uh, we've got five witnesses. We've got Joseph Smith. Um, and we've got four other witnesses who saw the plates and saw the angel Marini deliver these plates. I actually did a bit of research on this. Um, I understand that there are eight, there are claimed eight witness, witnesses, witnesses who signed sworn affidavits. Now to me, you know, the fact that we've got eight witnesses, say, okay, let's say five. He kept nitpicking on this, Justin Bass said, oh no, it's not five, it's four. Uh, you know, as if, you know, <laughs> he's trying to say, yeah, but with the apostles, etc., with Peter, Mary Magdalene, we had six, so he's, he's, it's almost like there's, he's trying to keep a score, like, but even if there were only three witnesses for the Mormons, the fact that it only happened 200 years ago or less than that, and we've got signed affidavits to me, makes that more credible that they really did see the angel Morini than that um, these witnesses from 2000 years ago who you know, left nothing behind in their own hand. Well, except for Paul, of course. Um, that doesn't seem to me credible at all. These are just reports of witnesses. Peter didn't write anything. These are reports about what he was saying and what he believed. So I thought you made a really strong point there that if you're going to believe in the resurrection, then you would have to believe in Mormonism because Mormonism, if anything, has got more, a more solid claim. If you're going to put a lot of weight on eyewitness testimony, we've actually got signed affidavits. So <laughs> <laughs> but you know this comes back to um, claims that we've got now in the in the modern world on uh, alien abductions. We get dozens of signed affidavits, and eyewitness testimony is really just not that valuable. It really isn't. Um, what else was said? Oh yes, yeah, so um, yeah, so Justin Bassey was saying, well, um, we've got conversions. We've got Muslims who see Jesus uh, and then they convert to Christianity, but we've never got Christians who see Allah. Well, that is true, uh, at least as far as I know. Uh, yeah, we do hear about Muslims saying they had a vision of Jesus and they converted. That's true. And although just Bart Ehrman didn't say this, but it occurred to me that it's much more in the tradition of Christians to have visions and see Jesus or see the Virgin Mary than it is in the tradition of Muslims. And that I would expect that Muslims who are kind of doubting their own faith and leaning already towards Christianity and knowing that there are these reported sightings of the Virgin Mary or people who walk every day with the living Jesus, it seems to me, that doesn't seem to me unreasonable that that is exactly what would happen, that we would have these claims from Muslims seeing Jesus, but no Christians Christians seeing Allah or seeing Muhammad. That to me doesn't really seem that remarkable at all. I did actually do some research and uh, it seems that there are a hundred thousand uh, people in the USA converting to Islam every year. There, are, I believe there are more Muslims converting to Christianity than the other way around. They're not claiming that they see Jesus, of course. Um, but of those 100,000, 80% uh, are Christians. Yeah, sorry. 80%, that's a lot. 80% are Christians. And I'm only saying that because Justin Bass was making a lot of appeals to uh, popularity. Um, ad populum saying, oh, it's the fastest growing religion. Um, it's the biggest religion in the world. And he actually said really hilariously towards the end that 
uh, it would be a very good explanation for the success of Christianity if the resurrection was true. <laughs> I thought that was absolutely hilarious that you said that. Um, I mean, that is just... Pff, it doesn't sound very academic. I thought this guy was a New Testament scholar. Uh, what else to say? Um, yeah, so Bart Ehrman was challenging uh, Justin Bates and saying, well... Um, Christianity has spread, but it hasn't spread. It hasn't spread to the whole world, has it? And uh, you know why? Why is that not the case? Because that's what Jesus promised, and we're two thousand years on, and that hasn't happened. And uh, Justin Bay said, "Well, uh, you have to have an open heart." <laughs> um, so I thought well, that was a fairly irrelevant point. I thought, what else have we got? Yeah, the point that the Virgin Mary has probably got more sightings in the last 2,000 years than Jesus, and that therefore, on the basis of eyewitness testimony, if you're going to believe, if you're going to believe in uh, the risen Jesus, you'd have to believe that all these eyewitness testimonies for the Virgin Mary are also true. And he said, well, no, because that's Catholicism, and they're, you know, um, no, I don't believe in all of those. So it seemed to me like a case of special pleading. Um... What else have we got here? I think that's just about it, really. If you saw the if you saw the discussion, um, leave in the comments anything that you thought was interesting. But oh yeah, so one last point. Yeah, so yeah, Bart Ehrman, he said, yeah, because we get this claim that all all New Testament scholars, all scholars agree that you know Jesus really died on the cross, the tomb was empty, etc., etc., etc. And Bart Ehrman said, well, yes, because virtually all New Testament scholars are Christians. Of course they believe that. It's the essence of their faith. And, uh, and he said, well, and then uh, Justin Bay said, well, you know, the, the case for the resurrection is strong. And Bart Ehrman said, yeah, but only Christians believe it. You you only tend to believe that the, the, the so-called evidence for the resurrection is strong. If you already are a Christian, if you already believe it and then see the case it le it lends more credence to your pre-existing beliefs. And then, amazingly, Justin Bay said, well, there is actually a Jewish scholar, a Jew, who um, read the case for the resurrection, and he admitted that the, res the case for the resurrection was strong, and he accepted that it happened. Well, that kind of begs the question for me, is he still a Jew? Has he not converted to Christianity? So I think that must be an outlier. I've never heard of that case. If you know anything about it, let me know. But it doesn't lend any credence. It doesn't increase, for me, the case for the resurrection. Okay, that's all. Uh, let me know what you thought. I thought it was a really good discussion. I, I really enjoyed it. I love uh, listening to Bart Ehrman talk and dealing with uh, a lot of these arguments. So that's all. Bye for now.